My name is Daniel and I was born in London. I have lived in England most of my life and now study here at the University of Winchester. My surname, however, is Van der Molen and I'm half Dutch. My granddad and dad were both born and raised in Amsterdam. I also lived in Amsterdam West for six months during my gap year. Amsterdam has become notorious for its liberal lifestyle and relaxed social laws. The consequence of this is that the commonly held perception of Amsterdam centres around sex and drugs. I, however, have my own views of the city. This is my Amsterdam. Schiphol Airport. It's the first place a lot of people see on arrival in Amsterdam. It's also had a part to play in my family's history. My granddad worked at KLM for 40 years, both in Amsterdam and in London. My dad and my uncle also worked at Schiphol Airport. It's huge. Schiphol Airport is one of the world's largest and busiest international airports, operating five runways and handling in excess of 50 million passengers per year. After a 20 minute train journey, we arrive here in the heart of Amsterdam, at Amsterdam Central Station. With the trains, trams, buses and metro all starting and finishing at this point, it truly lies at the heart of Amsterdam's transport system. And that's not to mention the bikes. The minute you step out of Central Station, you're hit by the sea of bicycles. Over 100,000 are parked here a day. Now, where did I leave mine? As I've said previously, Amsterdam's notoriety stems from its drug culture and red light district. Maybe that's the best place to start. On walking into a coffee shop in Amsterdam, it is likely that caffeine will not be the only drug available to you. Amsterdam's relaxed policy towards the legal availability of soft drugs is well known and it is catered for via a network of licensed coffee shops. There are currently some 300 such cafes in Amsterdam, but this number is dwindling compared to 10 years ago, since the trade has become more regulated. So we have now a right-wing government, well, the Social Democrats and the right-wing right -wing parties, and they are heavily against it. I know many tourists come for smoke hush and, and stuff like that, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, that's, that's for us it's normal. The Amsterdam municipal government is not against it, um, so I think they will, they will stay, I, I think, but they will be restricted. Cannabis only inside, not outside, but everybody thinks in Amsterdam is, everything is allowed, but it's right the opposite. Amsterdam is the city of, of bitches, money, weed and alcohol. You see this? Party every day, every day, elke dag feest. Look at this, you can smoke weed, roll it on the street, police don't say nothing. Amsterdam's red light district leaves nothing to the imagination. It's where women of all nationalities parade their wares in front of windows as if in brightly lit red vending machines. The red light district encompasses a mix of seedy nightlife and innocent tourism. Hordes of men, young and old, seeking their gratification and busloads of Japanese tourists trying to get another snap for their album. In truth, this part of Amsterdam attracts a wide variety of different folk, from groups of giggling women on a hen night to romantic couples quietly strolling the streets of this wholly surreal part of Amsterdam. You can't organise prostitution, I'm, I'm sure you can't, so it will take place uh, somewhere else. Now they're trying to organise prostitution, they will not ban it, I'm sure. You get maybe four customers, five customers, really good pay. If they pay each 50 euro, then yeah. it's really good. The English come more to Amsterdam to have the freedom of a smoking a joint, to see the red light district, and just to have the freedom that you have in Amsterdam. So they can just smoke on the street and have their beer together, and that's probably the thing they want most. Yeah. Are your customers usually, uh, have they been smoking a lot? Yes, some customers, yes. England, mostly. Yes. <laughs> England, mostly. With truck and... <laughs> and really, really stones and... <laughs> Do you think they come over for any other reasons? No, no, not... No, I don't think so. <laughs> for sure not. No. No, they really come here to party and just to enjoy the smoke and drink together. 
no many to it's come for it's smoke hash and, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Well, they really come here to party and just to enjoy the smoking things. Surely there is more to Amsterdam. Let's go back to where my links with the city began, my granddad's place of birth. My Dutch granddad, born 7th of May 1919, was as big at Amsterdam as they come. Big Ajax fan. He was just 22 years old when his life became in danger through Hitler and his Nazi regime. Through no fault of his own, he was born with Jewish blood, not religious in the slightest, but this was enough to put his life in danger. That was the brutality of the Second World War. So this is where my granddad was born in Amsterdam on Van Waal Street, on the first floor up there. He spent two and a half years in hiding during the war and luckily he survived. Unfortunately not all stories ended that way and one in particular springs to mind. 